So today we'll be doing a pastel drawing of some red peppers. So I have that reference down below. And then what you want to make sure you have is some soft pastels, which I have a couple different colors. Kind of depends on what set you have. But you want to have a nice kind of bright red and then a cooler or darker red. And I have kind of a dark purple, or you can always make a dark purple by having like a dark blue and adding a little bit of a red to it. And then I have a green and kind of a light um, yellow. And then you can also have a white charcoal pencil for some of the white areas, or if you have a white pastel pencil, or a really small kind of white um, stick for those small details. And then also for blending, I love using kind of Q-tips or um, anything, you know, that's kind of like that because they're really great for reaching into the small areas and spreading sometimes the pastel. Having a little eraser to kind of help tidy up your edges is great as well. So I've already gone ahead and drawn my peppers a little bit lightly onto my paper using my white charcoal pencil. I'll make those a little bit darker. So when you're trying to draw two shapes, because I have one pepper that's behind the other, so when you're drawing those, you want to make sure you don't try and draw, you know, half the pepper and then the other half. You want to try and draw them as one shape, you know, like I started the back pepper almost like an oval and then started looking at where it was curving, you know, and how it was touching the other pepper. And then I drew the pepper that was on top also kind of as an oval. And then I started looking at kind of the angle that it's turning. And that's really important to kind of get it to look like it's leaning on the pepper, but it's not like flying into the air or something like that. So now that I have my kind of main shape drawn on, what you want to do next is very lightly start putting in your lights. So the highlights are going to be kind of the brightest parts on your peppers, as well as anywhere that shows that it's white. So our pepper has a really, really strong highlight on this side, which I'm kind of using the side of the tip to get those small areas. There's a little bit of a highlight over there, which is kind of blended in, so we can kind of fuzz it a little bit. And then there's some down here even a little bit over here, which this highlight is not as bright as our other one, so I don't want to go as heavy as I would with my other highlight. Um, and then I'm probably going to layer over with it some red. And then there's some highlights over here, because our light source is kind of coming from this area, so it's kind of hitting this side of the pepper and then that side of the pepper. And there's also a little bit of white here. And then once you start filling in your pepper, you don't have to keep this white line. Sometimes the white line around it is really distracting. So it's good sometimes once you're done to kind of get rid of it all. So I'm going to start with first working into kind of my um, main red areas. And I'm just kind of putting some red, and this is a really, really bright red, um, kind of around some of my highlights because I see that the Pepper is a little bit brighter around my highlights. And when you use pastel, you can kind of use the side of the tip for small areas. This side is really good for if you're trying to fill in really large areas. You don't want to try and use that when you're trying to fill in small spaces. Um, and you don't want to try and use the tip for really big spaces because that'll kind of scratch up your paper. So I'm just kind of still putting in my red. And then since this highlight has a little bit of red on top of it, I can kind of blend it on top a little bit. So my white and red are going to kind of mix a little bit. Which is exactly what I want it to do. And the great thing about pastel is if you accidentally get into an area that you didn't want the red to be, or maybe you got a side of your line, um, instead of blowing on the chalk, what you want to do is kind of 
tap it off into a trash can because this kind of stuff will get into the your eyes and your lungs and it's very annoying. Um, and also, you know, if you don't want to brush it off with your hand, you can just use your kneaded eraser to kind of erase those bits or even when you put it in the background, um, that'll kind of help get rid of it as well. So I'm still just kind of blocking it in. And with pastel, you don't want to get too heavy because if I put way, way, way too much of this red, then it's going to be hard to put any other colors on top of it. So once I have my brighter red, then I can start coming in with my dark red to start putting in some of my shadows. And you know, depending on your color, what's great about pastel is you can always add other colors to it. Because right now this is a really, really brown red. So I could probably maybe add like a cooler red on top of it if I have another red. Or even add maybe a little bit of purple. So the first few stages using pastel, it's always kind of the blocking in stage. And then once you kind of have it more blocked in, then you can start um, adding your details. So it's really dark up there. And then I'm going to use this purple for those really dark shadows, you know, so that this pepper looks like it's on top of that one. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this shadow underneath my peppers, just really lightly. And then there's a little tiny hint of purple over here. And then now what I'm going to do, since I have a lot of pastel going on right now, I'm going to take my finger, or you could even take a Q-tip, and I'm going to start kind of in the light areas and kind of slowly rotate to kind of blend my colors, not pushing very hard. Because when you're blending pastels, you don't want it to become flat and boring and kind of lose all the pretty you know, different colors you put in there. And then if I add some white on top of my color, it's not going to stay perfectly white, just because pastel is almost like wet paint. So if you put another color right on top of it, it's going to blend, which is fine, because those are kind of blended highlights. And I can add a little bit of yellow down here, which you could also use kind of a bright like cadmium yellow and then I'll probably come in with some more of this regular red because it's starting to get a little bit pale. I don't want my pepper to lose its redness as I'm adding more layers. So and then I'm going to come and start blending over here and this area is very small so it would probably be a great place to use a q-tip. So I can kind of just very gently touch it, you know, trying to treat it just like you would your finger, just because sometimes we can over blend, like I said, and then everything just kind of disappears. So I'm going to kind of blend those highlights in. I'm going to start blending these. Okay, and then on this pepper, I'm going to kind of introduce a tiny bit of purple. Just a little bit, because you don't want it to be as dark as your shadow. Or the area. So I'm just adding a little bit of purple on top, just very lightly blending it in. And then in order to get back some of my highlights, um, with pastel it's good to have, you know, to get a sense of depth by having some areas that are blended and then some areas that you kind of go on top of really, really heavy and you just kind of leave them as a really kind of sharp highlight. Because if you blend everything, then it's just going to all look really blurry. So you want to have some sharp edges and some blended in edges. And then I probably need to add a little more white down here.
And then I'm gonna move on to adding some green into my stems. And I'm just gonna kind of put a base of green on here. And then on one side of my pepper, since there's a little bit of a highlight, I'm gonna put some yellow, which that yellow is way too light. So I'm probably gonna come in uh, with some regular yellow. I'm gonna kind of blend those in. I can add some texture with my pencils, which they do make pastel pencils, which are great for adding little details to pastels, just because it kind of gets hard to fit in your finger into all those really small areas. So I'm gonna use some darker green on this side. It's kind of light over here because this is kind of like the open stem area. And then you could even add a little bit of brown to your green. And that would kind of help dirty it a little bit. Because you don't want your green to be too happy because then it doesn't look natural. So I'm going to leave this drawing kind of loose, uh, which that is kind of to you. I mean, you can work it as much as you want to. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of a dark brown down here to make my shadow a little bit darker where it's right near my pepper. And then for the edges, I don't want to leave them like that. I'd kind of take a clean or slightly clean finger, as clean as they can be, <laughs> and fade out a little bit on the edges. And then I can always take an eraser and kind of tidy those up a little bit. And you can kind of see I have kind of some lines for where I was drawing on. That's why you have to be careful when you're drawing and just use a really light pressure. I can also use this eraser to tidy up any of the areas that maybe my pastel got outside of the lines. And then I can also come back in and pop those highlights again. Which the key to saving those really bright highlights is just not getting too overzealous with the blending. There's a little bit of reflected light down here. I'll really blend that in. And there you have it. That's how to start your peppers. And you could always keep going, you know, adding more layers to it and just making sure to shake it off. That, that's how I get rid of a lot of this excess pastel is just by kind of shaking it off into a trash can periodically.